Tomo Fujita says, don't worry, don't compare, don't expect too fast, be kind to yourself. There, I wanted to show that up front so that everybody who just clicked away will have at least seen those words and maybe will think about them. Uh, I'm Jack Howell. Uh, this is another one of my uh, videos primarily for my Duquesne students, but internet being the internet, who knows um, who's watching it. You could be halfway around the world. You, uh, you could be watching this a number of years yeah, uh, from now, in which case, holy cow, can you believe we made it through that crazy stuff? Uh, I'm not playing for two reasons, maybe one reason. I've been thinking about this video since I started thinking about videos, um, and I think it's very important. But um, I thought, well, I should probably play something for an intro. If I couldn't, well, what do you play? Uh, we're going to talk about the best frame of mind for practicing. How do you introduce that? Um, like I said, it's important. Um, one's mental approach to practicing is really far more important than the various individual techniques and, and topics that, that we're, we've been talking about. And it has more to do with improvement and success than any musical idea or instrumental technique. But it's not like there's anything instrumental to illustrate. So, I don't know, I was thinking maybe I should play something really hard to prove that I practiced. Uh, but then, last week, after being back to school for one week, and after three and a half years of not getting COVID, I got COVID. Uh, while I never felt in mortal danger, it pretty much kicked my tuchus, and playing the clarinet has been out of the question. Um, Maybe I'll try a little bit later today, but it's probably it's still a day or two away. If I have a coughing fit, I'll try and edit that out. But I thought, you know, maybe that's my sign that, that this is the time to talk about this topic when, um, when I'm well enough to talk, but not well enough to play. <clears throat> the world has changed a lot in the 30 or 40 years that I've been playing the clarinet professionally and teaching. Um, it's everything has changed. And when I think back to when I was in school, in, in my entire academic career, I can't think of a single time when anyone showed the slightest concern for my mental state. And if I ever expressed frustration or doubt to a teacher, I think it was interpreted as weakness. And the remedy was to work harder, suck it up be tougher, be more resilient, be hungrier. Simple. Uh, but it's not that simple. Over time, and having taught a lot of students, um, I've seen students who have really struggled in various ways and to various degrees. And while I realize that I'm not a psychologist and, and I have to be very careful not to intrude into actual psychology, when I encounter a student who's practicing tensely and obsessively right into tendonitis, or I have a student who's paralyzed by anxiety, or there's one of those students who's practicing but never seems able to quite put it all together, you can't just say, suck it up. You have to try and find ways to make playing music on the clarinet a safe, happy place. So. As a teacher, you want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Now, if you're one of my students, or a student, or anybody, and you don't need this advice, that's awesome. Live long and prosper. Uh, by the same token, if you're struggling and you don't find everything that you need in this video, if thinking about practicing a little differently doesn't fix things, Please, get real professional help. Don't just listen to me. So, I believe that we can change how and what we think, including how and what we think when we practice and perform. Um, 
I believe that our most productive practice happens when we are completely absorbed and present in the moment. We're excited, we're happy. And in my career as a teacher, I've seen in students a strong correlation between a positive attitude and success. If we're not practicing in that present, happy state, we can change. And we want to change if we're not. Our practice time is precious. It's a privilege. It's all we have. We can't afford to waste it in frustration. So, so um, when I saw Tomo Fujita's Guitar Wisdom, the rules that I just showed you, um, I immediately thought, yes, he nailed it. That's so simple. So I made a copy for my studio, and I'm going to talk about what these rules mean to me and how I convey them to students um, and how I think you can apply them, if needed. I actually will say quite a bit more about them than Tomo does. If you look him up, and I'll put a link in the description, you'll find that he is a man of relatively few words, while I am not. If I get any of it wrong, I take responsibility for my faulty interpretation, and I hope Tomo and I get a chance to talk about it someday. So, who's Tomo Fujita? Uh, Tomo Fujita is a jazz guitarist who is, or, or was, a guitar teacher at the Berklee School. He was John Mayer's teacher at Berklee. Maybe you've heard of John Mayer. Uh, Tomo is a very tasty player. Uh, and I found him because I'm a hobby guitarist and, and a consumer of YouTube guitar instruction. Perhaps, like some of you, are consumers of YouTube clarinet instruction. Like I said, I'll put a link to Tomo's channel in his description. I like Tomo's playing, I, I, I like his lessons, but I love his gentle, encouraging spirit. And I think he makes complete sense. So, his rules. First rule, don't worry. Sometimes students actually express worries. They, 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 they express worry that they won't be good enough, that a, a performance or an audition will go poorly, or that if they don't make enough progress, they, they, they won't be able to get a job. And it's true. Those things might happen. The thing is, they haven't happened yet. They're in the future, and the time to practice is now. I understand worrying because I'm a worrier. Uh, there are so many things in the world that seem to be going wrong. But I always try and remember a quote from Mark Twain, who, writing toward the end of his life, said, I am an old man. My life has been filled with a thousand tragedies, the vast majority of which never happened. The time to practice is now, so in order to practice, you have to be here now, not busy in some imaginary future where you're already not good enough. And not to put too fine a point on it, students who practice out of fear to avoid an imaginary future failure usually avoid practicing almost entirely. Practicing is positive. We should practice with excitement to see how good we can get, rather than with frustration and fear that we won't be good enough. And if you spend your practice time in the future, you'll miss all the little victories happening right now that add up to success. So, don't worry. Make practice a worry-free zone. Second rule, don't compare. This is hard. We're social animals. Uh, we're, we're wired to, to try and figure out where we fit in the pecking order. Um, and you can see signs of it everywhere. I can remember going to auditions where everyone would either be in, in a, in a big warm-up room or maybe they'd be in a row of practice rooms going down a hall and um, everybody would be warming up 
and then somebody would just start nailing Capriccio Espanol, and then somebody else would start playing it. And then pretty soon the whole room or the whole row was like a tree full of, of maniac parrots, everybody trying to out Capriccio each other. <clears throat> it was hell. And the worst thing you could do in that situation was to start comparing your Capriccio to everyone else's Capriccio. Everyone has different gifts. Whether you have a truly monstrous technical Capriccio or whether you have a more elegant structured Capriccio, your job is to execute the way you prepared Capriccio to show the committee what's special about you not to walk out on stage with your head ringing with, uh, with everybody else. Wait a minute, you say. What do you mean don't compare? Don't I have to listen to my competition to figure out what I have to do to, to beat them? Don't I have to compare myself to the best players to figure out how I need to improve? Well, yes. That's kind of the problem when we use the same word uh, to, to describe different things. It's okay to be competitive. Success in auditions is necessary to get into an orchestra, but you don't win an audition by beating other players like it was a race. You win by being the best possible version of yourself you can be and then having the committee fall in love with you. You have total control over the first part. You have zero control over the second part. If you listen to another player and you think, wow, that's what a beautiful tone. I have to try and remember to find that tone when I practice. I think that's artistic. I think that's honest. But if you think, wow, that tone is so much better than mine, I just can't, can't compete with that. Or if you think, that's not a very good sound. At least I've got that person beat, then I think that's what Tomo says not to do. By all means, listen to each other. Listen to the best players in the world. Use other people's successes for models and for inspiration. But don't feel inferior if or because you are not yet that which you wish to become. Don't allow anyone else's supposed superiority keep you from doing anything or from enjoying your own improvement. By the same token, if you feel you're a better player than someone else, or if you are chosen over another player in an audition, don't take too much satisfaction in that. That thought is a siren. It will lead you onto the rocks. Focus on your work. Do your best every day. Be the best you can be. Don't compare. Remember, the, the player who wins an audition is not necessarily the one with the fastest fingers or fastest articulation or the biggest job. It's the player the committee picks. And <clears throat> I'm moved to tell you a story. Uh, my, my students love it when I tell them stories. Years ago, when I, when I <clears throat> was in New Mexico, I was principal in New Mexico, which is a job that was just big enough to get me a, a, a prelim, preliminary invitation to just about any audition in the country. So I took a lot of preliminary auditions. I advanced quite a bit. Um, didn't always. But I remember taking an audition um, in, I'm going to say, a top 15 orchestra at least top 15, maybe a little better than that. And I played the preliminary round and I advanced. The next round, the next day was the, sem the semis and, and the finals. And I showed up in the morning for my semi and the, the advanced semis played together with the invited semi-finalists. Being orchestra uh, players in bigger orchestras uh, who by virtue of their position, were excused from playing a preliminary. It's, it's, it's very common in, in auditions, and usually it's in the contract, that if you're auditioning for the Pittsburgh Symphony and you've got a position in the Boston Symphony, you don't have to play a prelim. 
So I showed up <clears throat> and one of the invited semifinalists came in and he was, he was famous. He was a, a section player in a top five orchestra. And, uh, you know, $3,000 suit, uh, just that, that big orchestra air, and uh, he was down the, down the hall a couple of rooms, and I could hear him warming up, and, and he sounded every bit as tremendous as you would expect. Polished, perfect, rock solid, great player. And if, if I said who it was, you'd say, well, yeah, yeah, great player. Um, but the funny thing is, and, and, and I, was, I felt very intimidated, but a funny thing happened. We played the round, and I advanced to the final, and he didn't. I didn't get the job either, but just go figure. Um, in any situation, you have to say, decide what you have to say musically and say it. It's the committee's job to compare, not yours, so don't. You do you. Third rule, don't expect too fast. We want to improve as fast as possible, naturally, normally, but it takes time to build skill. It takes time to mature as an artist. If we are impatient when we practice, it's easy to become tense, to start thinking about the future and slip back into bad habits we're trying to fix. Young professionals, young musicians, I'm going to say, not necessarily young professionals, often feel a lot of pressure to set and achieve goals. And if you're on a professional track, there's something to that. There are certain accomplishments, like getting into a certain festival or a certain graduate program, that may mean you're on the right track. And there's difficult repertoire that, in order to be employable, you'll have to be able to play consistently under adverse conditions. If you can't play it right now, of course you want to gain that ability as quickly as possible. But let's be sensible. Let's stay here and now. Let's say you're a gardener and you have a rose bush. If your rose bu bush isn't blooming, are you angry? Do you, do you yell at it? You stupid bush, where are my roses? No, of course not. That would be crazy. So you tend your rose bush. You give it what it needs today, not more. You water it. You fertilize it. You keep weeds away from it and other plants from crowding its sunlight. And when it does bloom, you enjoy the results of your work. It's the same with Daphnis and Chloe. Don't waste your precious now and, and don't miss enjoying what you're accomplishing today by being unhappy because you are not yet that which you wish to become. Don't expect too fast. It'll happen. Finally, be kind to yourself. The word is kind, not self-indulgent. Being kind to yourself doesn't mean don't be disciplined, don't evaluate yourself clearly. It doesn't mean give yourself a pass for a half-hearted effort or treat yourself by skipping your practice time to, to go out for pizza. You are the only one who knows if you're doing your best. But if you are doing your best, admit it. Be kind to yourself. I've had students who seem to make it a point of not being happy with anything they played. And when they played something in the lesson, they would preempt criticism by being theatrically self-critical. Such a student would play something and then scowl and say something disparaging, even if what they had played was actually pretty good. And if I talked to these students the way they talked to themselves, I'd get fired immediately. It, 
obviously it's a defense mechanism. It's a habit, but it's harmful. In order to improve, you have to identify and encourage what is good in your playing, not simply stamp out what is bad. Be kind to yourself. There are also students who will, will play along in, in a lesson correctly and matter-of-factly, and, and then they'll make a mistake and they'll just come unglued. This is another dangerous habit. Remember that your body, the part that plays the clarinet, doesn't understand words. It understands sensations and emotions. So if you have a hundred times greater emotional reaction to a mistake than you did to the entire rest of the piece that you played beautifully, your body will try to find more and better mistakes to make. So be kind to yourself when you make mistakes. Recognize and correct mistakes. Don't focus on them and give them extra power. Being kind to yourself doesn't mean choosing an easier path or lowering your standards or aspirations. The higher your standards and the bigger your goals, the better, I think. By all means, dream extravagantly. The question is whether you are energized by your goals and motivated to make progress toward them, however incremental, or if you're stressed and frustrated by the enormity of, of the task. Being kind to yourself allows you to be realistic and also positive about big goals. Is there a tremendous amount of work to be done? Yes, there is. That's okay. That's kind of the point. I have a tremendous amount of work to do. Most of us have a tremendous amount of work to do. That doesn't mean we suck. It means we are devoted to music, which is a journey that goes on forever. I remember, and this is one of my favorite stories, I remember a TV interview that Maria Callas gave where the interviewer asked her about preparing for a new role. She, she launched into a thorough and detailed explanation beginning with, quote, my first duty as an artist is to dominate the material technically. I want to sing it like Heifetz would play it, close quote. And she went on through the, the score study and dramatic analysis and the costuming and the staging and blocking and the weeks of rehearsal she would spend with a piano accompanist before she would dare set foot in front of an orchestra. The interviewer exclaimed, what a terrible lot of work, to which Callis said, not work. You serve that which you adore. Isn't that beautiful? That the great Maria Callas, La Divina, considered herself a servant. And I don't imagine that in doing her work, she spent, she wasted much energy berating herself. Similarly, I once heard a, a pretty accomplished rock singer answer, answer a question about stage fright. He said that stage fright is basically selfish. That it's you worrying about yourself looking bad. That instead of thinking about what the audience might think of you, you should be thinking about the audience and what you must do in order to make them feel what the music intends in that moment. That's pretty good, I think. And it's kind of like what Callis said, serve that which you adore. Not every practice will be better than the last one. Not every concert or audition will be as good as your practice. But if you work consistently, intelligently, and happily, you will improve. And the more you recognize and enjoy your own improvement, the more your miraculous body will generate improvements. I can't say that this process will result in your becoming principal in Berlin or Boston, but of all the alternative approaches, I think it's the best one. 
So let's wrap this up. In order to stay here and now when you practice, Tomo Fujita says, don't worry, don't compare, don't expect too fast, be kind to yourself. If you do those things, you're at least staying out of your own way. And you're staying in the present. As Master Ugwe from Kung Fu Panda said, Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. Go get them.